Ken, you're a physicalist. You believe that uh, consciousness can be explained uh, in the material world, and you focus on the computational theory of mind uh, as a, a core worldview to uh, direct your thinking. Uh, how does it work, and how do you justify it? Well, actually, uh, when I say computational theory, I actually mean something that is beyond the traditional computation. By which I mean that when people say computation, uh, people usually mean the Turing machine type of computation. You know, Alan Turing, a great math uh, mathematician, right. he conceived this uh, theoretical model, which is the basis for every right. modern computer that we have today. And we have been doing fine with this idea of computation, but as Roger Penrose you know, mm -hmm. very creatively criticizes it. Uh, I think this idea of computation is not sufficient to understand, you know, the essence of consciousness. So what, when I say computational theory of mind, I would like to go beyond this traditional sense of computation. I think this idea of computation have strict, uh, restricted my, our, you know, thinking, uh. just the way uh, our traditional view on materialism <laughs> have restricted our thinking. So I think it's time we revised this idea of computation. That's actually my own intuition. Okay, so uh, I, I know what computation is on computers. I can understand how it can be massively parallel. Yeah, yeah. But, but then how, how then do you take computation into a, a, a new form? You know, uh, Roger Penrose uh, focuses on understanding. Uh, you know, he wants to understand what understanding is. Mm. And I have similar feeling because, you know, when you say that, uh, you know, a bit of a uh, series of zero and, and ones have, uh, well, is coding for color red, mm. you know, this coding is so arbitrary. You right. don't really understand the color red in this way. So actually understand, asking what are the foundations for understanding that a bit of information signifies something. Right. You actually need to understand consciousness, I think, because in consciousness, everything is clear. You know, when you see something red, <laughs> you feel that it is right. red. It's not just a bit of, you know, it's a series of bits and so on. Right. So actually, so this is something. That sounds like circular reasoning. Circular you know. reasoning, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why we are having such a hard time. It appears that in order to understand consciousness, you need to, you know, come up with an idea about computation which is based not only in this kind of coding idea, you know, because coding is arbitrary yeah. in the Turing machine sense. Right, right. We need to have some you know, natural way of coding information, which is not based on this arbitrary look lookup table type <laughs> yeah, yeah, argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in principle, is that possible? Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew, no, uh, I would that, be happy. That's a, that's a great answer. Because many people say, sure, it's in principle possible. There can't be anything else. We just can't find it yet. We have no idea, but in principle possible. But I'm asking, but, but you're saying that in principle, you're not even sure if it's possible. No. Okay. So if it turns out it's possible, I think you're saying that there's some different type of transformation or, 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 or relationship between the coding that we have no idea of. Yeah. But suppose it's in principle not possible, then what? You're, but, you're but, saying that's, po that's possible. Yeah, but you know, Robert, uh, evidently our brain is doing just that. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you know, right. you know, conscious it's, family experience, you know. Right, we, right, right. You know, qualia are somehow coded by neural activities. Right. And it's not the, just the inner experience yeah, what we see. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's not just arbitrary lookup table. Right. People talk about you know reverse quarrier and so on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it possible that the quail of red is you know exchanged with the quail of green? Right. And, and what so I what I'm calling red, you're seeing green. You're calling it red. Yeah. We're both calling it red, but your visual impression is no way we can exactly. That. So people do explore these uh, possibilities, but it seems that the brain has somehow managed to do this kind of very natural coding system. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's okay to say that you are striving to find the computational theory of the mind. But uh, when you say computational theory, I, I don't think the Turing machine type uh, computation is sufficient. So we do need a new version of computation. But as we agreed, probably, uh, 
arriving at this new version of computation is equal to solving the problem of consciousness. <laughs> so that sounds like you, you, unless you solve the problem, you're not going to make any pro any progress, which sounds circular in itself. Yeah, so that's why I find uh, the arguments by Roger Penrose so fascinating because, you know, nobody says that Penrose has solved the problem, but I think he's pointing in a very, you know, poignant and, you know, productive way mm. towards, you know, this new theory of computation. And we really need to understand what understanding is. And, uh, you know, because understanding, when you understand something, you feel as if you have hold of uh, every bit of information mm, 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 that mm. is there. Mm. And you know, it's not done in an arbitrary lookup table kind of way. Mm, mm. So we really need to understand understanding.